automated vehicles are actually here. And it's not science fiction. And I feel like every time I look up, the it gets closer instead of farther. Um, I, someone said to me, um, so is it five years away? He says, everything's five years away. I said, no, no, not only that, it's not five, it's like three and a half years away now, three years away. And so what do the upstarts say? So Elon Musk, in seven to eight years, 50% of the cars sold will be autonomous. Um, John Zimmer last week, by 2025, private car ownership will all but end in major US cities. And I wanna say, I'm in that camp. And Uber, um, CEO, there's an urgency to our mission about being part of the future. This is not a side project, this is existential for us. Which is just to say, it really truly is happening now, and the transition, I think, in major metro areas is gonna be really, really fast. So we have this choice. We have autonomous vehicles that are gonna swap out our personal internal combustion engines for personal AVs. Might be electric, might be not, is not guaranteed. I keep asking CEOs of AV companies if they're gonna be EVs too, and I'm not quite convinced what the answer is gonna be on that. Or they can be something I'm calling here FAVES, fleets of autonomous vehicles that are electric and shared. And this is really a huge choice. We have these two paths, and I see the AVs, and I see my little thing as mirrors came out, as what's gonna be hell, and it's like a wait and see approach, and heaven will be if we're really proactive about it and we can get to FAVES. I see in the US that we could have in dense metro areas of a five year transition and I wanna walk you through that. So year one, let's go Las Vegas. There's a hundred vehicle small pilot in that city who's taking it, students, tourists, late night workers, it's a hundred cars, no one's making any fuss. And remember these cars are now self-marketing, like they drive around and everyone's seeing them, everyone's talking about them, it's like the thing. So that's year one and what's gonna happen, there'll be operational issues for sure and they will sort those, those out. Then we'll go to years two through five. They'll expand to like a thousand fleet vehicle. And what will happen, I think, from people who don't have cars will clearly be using it. People who have cars, your, if your second car is out at the shop or broken or whatever, you'll have this reason. You say, okay, I'm going to go try it once. When you try it once, you realize, wow, that was door to door. It was a snap. I used my app. I didn't die. It was so great. And you will sell your second car. And then after you sell your second car, when you have to go and figure out, when you make these big choices, this is what we learned at Zipcar, when people make big choices, they got a new job, they have a big repair bill, they have to buy a new car, then they'll reflect and think, why am I owning a car? And so that's why I believe it will be very fast transition, because within five years, people will be able to reflect, what in heck, why am I owning a second car? Definitely not, and why am I owning a first car? Because I can use these vehicles. And so this will be showing itself to be fantastic in Las Vegas, and in years three for five, if you are not Las Vegas and you're watching this thing play out, how can you say no? How can you say, no, no, not Boston. We're not gonna do that. Of course you're gonna do that. Of course you're gonna say, we have to have this because everyone else has it. So I think it's gonna be really very fast. The way people are thinking about autonomous vehicles today is so focused on safety and regulation and maybe they're thinking, okay, it's gonna be shared and multimodal or we're gonna make it electric. And this, we're not gonna get this job done if we don't deal with so many other things. The transportation infrastructure revenue piece, land use and urban planning. We've got to decide what are our community priorities right now. Labor, labor is going to be a gigantic issue and labor is going to push back and they should push back. But we have the 36,000 traffic deaths that we don't want to see anymore. So we're going to go down this path and we have to deal with labor and we have to think about it and it is the reference case for the future of automation. So let's do the labor right. Data, what do we do about, we need shared open APIs to maximize the number of shared trips, the likelihood of shared trips. So it's something that we really need to get on as well as have you know, secure and privacy and demand. We've got to teach people. People are just in their minds thinking, oh yeah, I'm just gonna switch out my own car. We have to paint for them this amazing vision of what FAVES looks like and that they wanna yearn and ask for that instead of just accepting status quo replacement. It's not gonna happen without us fighting for it.